Tonight's story, Finnegan and Fox, the 10-foot cop. I hope you enjoy it. My name is Finnegan. I am 10 years old, weighing 1,256 pounds, and wear steel shoes. I'm a proud member of the New York City Police Department. Times Square is my beat. My partner, Tyrone Jefferson Fox. We call him TJ, but it's Officer Fox to you. TJ grew up right here in New York City and plays a mean game of basketball. Together, we make a 10-foot tall policeman. The NYPD mounted unit takes only the best, horses or officers. You've got to have a calm temperament and a cool head to make the grade and patrol the Big Apple. We horses are naturally nervous and likely to run when frightened. Months of training at the NYPD Remount School get us ready to face any situation with confidence and control, whether it's handling a rowdy crowd at a ball game or marching in formation down Fifth Avenue in a parade. With our human partners, we can see and be seen in the crowded streets. Not everyone feels comfortable around a police officer. People can be annoying, but who doesn't like a horse? After graduation, we get assigned to our partners, officers who have just finished training, along with those whose mounts have retired, get a chance to look us over. I want a partner who's smart and steady, so I'm putting my best hoof forward. One officer circles me slowly, really taking his time. He's a tall guy, his uniform is crisp and his badge shines. He checks me out from forelock to tail, running a cool, firm hand along my flank, asking the trainer all about me. His name is Finnegan. He's steady and strong, but he can be honored. He has a mind of his own, the trainer says. Well, I guess that makes us a match. Let's go, Finnegan, TJ says as he swings onto my saddle. We've been a team ever since. Our day starts in the new stables on Pier 76 near the Hudson River. The hostlers take care of us, get us fed, brushed and polished up so we are as neat and trim as our human partners. TJ checks my hooves, gives my mane and tail a final brushing, he likes us to look extra handsome, and saddles me up. TJ often attends roll call, gets our instructions for the day, then off we go. His son is on the corner with his fruit and vegetable car and a pile of tasty looking apples. He waves at TJ and me, but no treats on patrol. Next, we pass Officer Serafina Ruiz directing traffic out of the Lincoln Tunnel. She blows her whistle hard and always gives TJ a big smile. Mrs. Waxman walks her dog, Murray. She flutters her fingers as we go by. Good morning, Officer Fox, and you too, Finnegan, Murray growls. The big blue and yellow umbrella means that TJ will stop for his morning coffee from Tony. Yo, Finnegan, Tony says and strokes my head as TJ takes a sip. It's 8 a.m. Titan Square is filled with people. A million and a half people go through Times Square every day, so I guess they have to start early. New Yorkers rush by on their way to work, but tourists stop and look and take pictures. Buildings aren't the only popular site. Every few blocks, someone stops to say hello. What's your horse's name? Can I pet him? Can my dad take our picture? What can I say? We are celebrities. For many city kids, we are the first horses they get to see up close. TJ lets them pet my neck and head. Their smiles shine as they repeat my name. Finnegan, hey there, Finnegan, nice horse. Sometimes I give them a little nicker and shake my head. Today, a group of kids on a school visit surrounds us and asks TJ all sorts of questions about me. What breed is he? What feed do you give him? What kind of saddle is that? These guys clearly know their horses, and no wonder. When TJ asks, where are you guys from? The answer is aloud, Cheyenne, Wyoming. One of the mothers leans in with a little girl in her arms. Hey, Maggie, look, a horse right in the middle of New York City. Maggie reaches out for my mane, presses her face against my head, and murmurs my name. It doesn't get any sweeter than that. She just loves horses, her mother says. An ambulance winds in the distance and flashing lights come into view. We fan out with Officer McNally and her mount, Eddie, to, to clear the way. TJ spots a car with an outdated inspection sticker and writes a ticket. A van marked, Cakes in Motion, stops next to us. The driver leans out the window. Officer, can you direct us to the Plaza Hotel? 
We have a wedding cake to deliver and we don't want to be late. TJ tells him the bells are out so the cake will arrive on time. Good luck, he calls after them. We ride by to see construction workers digging deep into the earth to build a new office tower. A scream gets everybody's attention. TJ and I turn and a young woman grabs TJ's boot. Something ran over my foot, she cries. Sure enough, a little mouse scuttles across the street and disappears between the buildings. You are okay, miss. It won't hurt you. She starts to calm down. By the way, TJ asks, where are you from? New Jersey, she says. Well, be careful. We don't like out of town or scaring our mice. Everyone laughs, especially the young woman. Then they all go on their way. There's a lot to do on patrol and the day passes quickly. After lunch, TJ's radio crackles and alert. A child is lost and we've been called in for the search. An officer passes out flyers with a photo. It's little Maggie from Wyoming. We believe she just slipped away when her mother's back was turned so she can't be far. With all the people in the streets, someone must have noticed the little girl all by herself. Fox, double check this area. He points to the map and off we go. The first minutes of a search are precious ones. The group from Wyoming has already been through this block calling Maggie's name, but TJ follows procedure and starts to investigate. TJ dismounts to talk to a storekeeper. Stand, Finnegan, he says as he fastens my reins. I'm trained to stay and not fiddle with my reins, but there's something down the alley I want to look at. I pull hard and walk down the alleyway toward a pile of cardboard boxes. I sniff at the boxes and whinny. Nothing. Then I nudge my nose at the side of a large one. A small hand curls around the edge, then a little face, streaked with tears, peeks out. Finnegan! Maggie cries. TJ runs down the alley. Finnegan, get back here! Then he sees our little friend and quickly radios a message. We've got her. I should say, Finnegan has her. In a few minutes, the alley is filled with people and with cameras. Maggie's parents hug her and me. Oh, Finnegan, her mother cries. All the strangers calling Maggie's name scared her, so she hid in the box. But she wasn't afraid of you. Finnegan, you are our hero. Well, they make a big fuss out of me, TJ too. By the time we ride back through Times Square, our photo has already been sent to the huge digital news sign looming over the square. People cheer us as we go by, but it's all part of our job. We head home for a shower, a good brushing, a dinner of our special feed, and maybe a nice treat. Tony's closing up his cart for the day, but raises his fist for a bump and shouts, way to go Finnegan. Mrs. Waxman calls, we are so proud of you. She holds up Murray, who greets us with a yip. Hey, Finnegan and Fox, you guys are heroes. Officer Ruiz beams as we go by. Her eyes are sparkling, and so are TJ's. As we turn the corner to the stable, TJ says, Finnegan, look, someone has a reward for you. I can see that Hassan is holding out a juicy red apple. Thanks for listening to tonight's story. I hope you liked it.